Hello dear students welcome back again to Chin Moe's biology channel so today we are here with the last episode of matter in our surroundings so this is mainly an important question session so uh, in the previous three lessons i've already uh, told you and taught you whatever is required for matter in our surroundings so there were many important questions in that episode so i told you i'll be discussing in the next video so if you have already written down those please uh, check the answers which i am also discussing with you so let's get started with today's episode of matter in our surroundings so what we are going to learn today we are going to discuss about these few important questions the first question is why ice floats on water why does a desert cooler cools better in a hot day why does the water kept in an earthen pot become cool in summer why is it that we drink hot tea or milk from a saucer rather than a cup uh faster what type of clothes should be wear in summer so these all are very important questions so we have all discussed about the uh, different properties and all what we have taught in matter so based on that only we are going to answer this following question so dear students if you know want to know the answer of these questions you need to subscribe to my channel you need to stay tuned stay updated with whatever i am posting uh, as per your curriculum i am posting the lessons as well as the questionnaire the important answers with notes and all so please do share it with your friends also if you are having any queries any doubts you need to write in my comment box so let's get started with today's episode where we are going to discuss about some important questions so first we are going to discuss about what is density so what is density we all know that density is the mass per unit volume of a substance is known as density so in the previous classes you have also uh, know, known this uh, concept of density in chemistry as well as in physics now it can be expressed as density is equal to mass per unit volume where d is the density m is the mass of the body and v is the volume so density is inversely proportional to volume so thus we can say that as the volume of a substance increases its density decreases so more the volume less the density so it is inversely proportional to the uh, volume so now uh, depending on this property only we are going to discuss about why ice floats on water now it is understood that uh, the density of an object determines whether it will float or sink so if the density of one object is lesser than that of the other mixture then only it will float so we have told the density is the mass per unit volume so if the density of ice is less than water then only it will float so whenever an object float it displaces the amount of liquid equal to its weight so if it is displacing the now when uh, the ship floats it is displacing the amount of liquid equal to its weight so then only it's floating so then the density of ice is 0.917 gram per centimeter cube and the density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube so the density of ice is just a little bit less than water so because of hydrogen bonding and its structure is similar to a cage so because of the hydrogen bonding only the density of ice is um, less by few grams uh, so um, in that of uh, water okay so when water freezes what will happen the molecules establish a more stable hydrogen bond so when the water is at normal temperature the hydrogen bonds are very much unstable they creep on breaking and binding breaking and binding so there is an unstable structure but when the water freezes the molecules establish a more stable hydrogen bond which locks the uh, them these hydrogen bonds firmly in a place okay so the molecules they are unable to uh, create many hydrogen bonds as normal water molecules because they are not free to move so the hydrogen bonds are static they are stable so they are not as normal water and so they are forming a cage like structure so as a result the frozen water molecules are not close together as liquid water molecules leading to a lower density so it is is it clear to everyone so this is mainly due to the hydrogen binding hydrogen bonding which is firmly uh, locking their place them in place okay and 
they these are um, more firm than that of uh, no, normal water molecules and these uh, this in frozen water molecules they are not as close as that in water and they lead to the lower density is it clear so on uh, on this density only on this point on this molecular bonding only hydrogen bonding only we are going to discuss about why ice floats on water so when water freezes into ice hydrogen bonds develop allowing the molecules to spread further apart so they are spreading further apart the hydrogen bonds are firm they are stable they are not breaking and again rejoining so they are firm they are stable and they are taking up more space they are lowering the total density and thus allowing the ice to float on water so this is the principle behind that ice uh, how the ice floats on water is it clear to everyone so these are the important points on which you should discuss about why ice floats on water so this point should be mentioned in your answers so let us move on to the next one so here we have seen that uh, these hydrogen bonding in two we are seeing first one is in ice and second one is in liquid water so in liquid water the hydrogen bonds we can see they are constantly uh, breaking and they are reforming okay they are breaking and reforming but in uh, ice you can see this hydrogen bonding it's very stable so these are the hydrogen bonds which are stable in ice but in uh, this water in this liquid at room temperature they are constantly breaking and they are constantly reforming so for that only the density of ice is lesser than that of water at room temperature so hence ice floats on water now the second question here is why does a desert cooler cools better on a hot dry day so why does it cool better on a hot dry day so the water when evaporated from a desert cooler it is absorbing the energy from the surroundings and making the surroundings cool so evaporation is always inversely proportional to humidity so lesser the humidity and higher the temperature the faster is the evaporation okay so humidity means the content of water vapor in air so lesser the humidity the temperature will be higher and the rate of evaporation will be higher when the humidity is less so it's inversely proportional to humidity so on a hot dry day the humidity is less the water presence inside the desert cooler evaporates more thereby cooling the surroundings more so this is why desert cooler cools better on a hot dry day so these are very simple questions and i have tried to write it in uh, different uh, making it into small and different points so that it will be easier for you to learn so next one is why does the water kept in an earthen pot become cool in summer okay so when the water is poured into an earthen pot a small part of water poured exists through the pores on the pot and it evaporates from the surface of the pot and thus making the water in the pot cooler than before so when the water is poured into the earthen pot a small part of water is poured exists through the pores on the pot and it, it takes the heat of the uh, pot water and it is evaporating from the surface of the pot so thus making the water in the pot cooler so for evaporation to take place water should get converted to vapor which occurs when it is taking heat from the surrounding so surrounding means uh, through the earthen pot through the pores of the earthen pot water should evaporate taking the heat from the water itself so the water evaporates when it absorbs the heat making the container cooler so when the molecules escape the liquid as vapors the water loses more heat in the form of kinetic energy leaving the uh, leaving the molecule so this is what is the principle behind the uh, water being cooled in an earthen pot so the molecules they are escaping uh, as uh, vapors and they are they are losing heat in the form of kinetic energy of the uh, kinetic energy of the leaving molecules okay is it clear so why does our palm feel cold uh, when we put acetone or petrol in it so acetone and petrol 
as well as um, perfume they are volatile so what does this term volatile means that they evaporate quickly when exposed to bigger surfaces okay so they are volatile liquids so during the process of evaporation what is happening they lose energy these uh, perfume acetone and petrol they are losing energy and to recompensate the loss of energy energy is gained by liquid particles from the palms that make the hand cool so energy uh, which is gained by the liquid particles from the palms that make the hand cool okay so acetone petrol and perfume they absorb uh, our palms latent heat of vaporization and the palm of the hand loses heat and they become frigid so this latent heat of vaporization i have discussed in full in one of my videos of matter in our surroundings please go through that and learn what is latent heat of vaporization i'm not going to repeat it again so it is a very important topic when you are studying this so let us move on to the next question so why is it that we drink hot tea or milk from a saucer rather than a cup faster so in a saucer a liquid has a wider surface area than in a cup so it is on uh, depending on the surface area the surface area is one of the elements that influences evaporation so the greater the surface area the greater the rate of evaporation as a result we can say that the evaporation in a saucer is always faster than that in a cup or a container which is having lesser surface area right so we can drink hot tea or milk from a saucer faster than that of a a uh, cup so is it clear so this is totally dependent on the wide surface area so more the surface area of the liquid more the rate of evaporation will happen and it will uh, cool faster okay so we can drink hot tea or milk from a saucer rather than a cup faster is it clear so i think all the questions which i am discussing they are clear to you all if there is any difficulty please ask me in the comment box so what type of clothes should we wear in summer so we should wear cotton clothes in summer why because as we sweat more in summer and cotton is a good absorber of sweat so it will be absorbing the sweat and as the cotton absorbs sweat the sweat quickly and due to evap it will evaporate easily taking the uh, heat from our body latent heat from our body and thus keeping our body cool so it is taking the heat from our body as cotton is absorbing the sweat it is taking heat from our body to evaporate that sweat to atmosphere so that Thus, it is making our body cool. So I think with all these questions, I have ended this lesson. If you are having any queries, more queries or doubts or questions, please do write in my comment box and stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel to get more updates on your syllabus as per the curriculum. I am I'll be posting all the lessons uh, with your difficult questions, which I'll be discussing. So share it with your friends also. Stay tuned. Stay updated with all my lessons. Thank you.